So here is the numerical example, a specific numerical example for which I needed the demand curve and the cost functions. That's it. All the model specific assumptions still remains. The only question specific assumption or the numerical uh, example assumptions are the cost function and the demand curve. So for that purpose, I assume that the inverse demand curve is 100 minus 16 times total quantity Q1 plus Q2. And for each firm, let's suppose the firms have uh, the uh, same, uh, the symmetric cost function, meaning four times, which is the marginal cost, the quantity. There is no fixed cost for simplicity. All right. So here again, our purpose is to find the best response functions or best reply functions or the reaction functions. How do we do that? Again, the profit function for firm one is the price which is 100 minus 16 Q1 plus Q2 times quantity, all right, minus cost for Q1, all right? So the first order condition means the derivative of this guy with respect to Q1. So don't forget to distribute Q1 over this parentheses. So if its derivative is going to be therefore 100, minus 16 Q1 square, so it's going to be 32 Q1 plus, oh, minus, all right, so minus 16 Q2 minus 4 equals 0. This is the first order condition. So solve this for Q1, which means uh, take Q1 to the left-hand side, all right? I mean, here I send it to the right-hand side. 32Q1 equals, and keep everything else on, on the other side. So 100 minus 16Q2 minus 4, all right? And leave Q1 alone. Well, Q1 is equal to, uh, this is, by the way, 100 minus 4, it's just 96, all right? So 96 divided by 32 minus 16 divided by 32Q2. And make the simplifications. You don't need to calculate those. But what I know is that 16, 32 cancel out. I have two here, one here. And here I have 32 and 96 cancel out. I have one here, I have three here. So therefore, the Q1, which is a function of Q2, right? The right-hand side is function, is equal to 3 minus 0.5 Q2. All right? So that's the reaction function for firm one. So it says... If my opponent, for example, produces one quantity, one unit of quantity, I must be producing three minus half, meaning 2.5 units of quantity. If my opponent produces two quantity, so I'm, I'm guessing, right? I'm guessing that my opponent is going to produce two. I don't know yet how many quantity will, my opponent will produce, so I'm guessing. So if it is producing two quantity, I must be producing two quantity as well, all right? If my opponent is producing, for example, four quantities, all right, well, I must be producing three minus four times 0.5, which is two, so one quantity, all right? So that, because that is the, 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 the quantity that will maximize my profit. So if my opponent, so there's an inverse relationship between Q1 and Q2. If my opponent produces more, I would like to produce less. Why is that? Well, because if my opponent produces more and I produce more, well, there's going to be an abundance of uh, product. What's going to happen? Because the demand curve is downward sloping, we have to charge a very low price to be able to sell all those products. All right? So... Uh, that's probably going to decrease not only my opponent's, but also my own profit. I mean, as a firm one, I don't care about my opponent's profit. So I only care about my own profit. So therefore, if my opponent produces more, I should probably produce less to keep my profit higher, to keep the price higher. All right, so that's, that's the idea. So this is how we find the first order condition. Oh, by the way, um, don't forget that when we write down a function, this parenthesis Q2 is, doesn't really mean much. It's like it means I have a function. This is my function, 3 minus 0.5 Q2. The, the name of my function is Q1, 
And this parenthesis Q2 says, well, my function depends on a parameter, which I call Q2. All right, so that's what the parenthesis is. So I can always ignore this parenthesis and just write Q1 equals 3 minus 0.5 Q2. All right, well, we do exactly the same thing for firm one, uh, for, for firm two, pi two, all right? Write down the profit function. The first order condition means take the derivative with respect to Q2, set it equal to zero, solve for it. Um, I'm not gonna do it, but you should do it uh, because I know at the end, the reaction function for firm two is gonna be three minus 0.5 Q1, all right? Well, how do I know that? Uh, well, because the cost functions are the same, not the same, I'm sorry, symmetric, like the marginal cost the same, all right, and no fixed cost. Well, then therefore the reaction functions must also be symmetric, meaning whenever I see one, replace it with two, and whenever I see two, replace it with one. So you're gonna get the reaction function of the other firm. And that's what I mean by symmetric, uh, sort of the mirror image in a sense. All right, uh, but again, it's like just do the math and you'll see this is gonna be the reaction function. Okay, what is next step? It's like, how do we solve this? All right, so in order to explain uh, why we solve it the way we solve it, uh, I'm going to uh, shoot another video. But here, let me just give you the recipe, all right? And then again, in the next video, I'm gonna explain why this recipe is the, you know, the right recipe. So if you want to solve the Cournot, the first thing you should do is to find the reaction functions of both firms and then solve those reaction functions simultaneously. So this is step one, all right? Finding the reaction function, reaction functions. And then in step two, I'm going to solve them. Solve reaction functions simultaneously. Well, why simultaneously? Uh, because the game is simultaneous. They're choosing their actions simultaneously. And again, the reason why simultaneous is gonna become clearer hopefully in the next video, which is gonna be shorter. So what does that mean solving the reaction function simultaneously? Well, I'm gonna ignore the parentheses, all right? So the Q1, has to be 3 minus 0.5 Q2, right? And Q2 must be equal to 3 minus 0.5 Q1, all right? So basically, solve these two. So I have two equations, two unknowns, solve them. That's the idea. So how can I solve them? I mean, for example, whenever I see Q2, just plug this guy, all right? So take the first equation, so Q1 equals 3 minus 0.5 times Q2. So whenever I see Q2, I'm gonna write 3 minus 0.5 Q1, all right? So the left-hand side is Q1, right-hand side is a function of Q1. So basically take the Q1 terms to the left-hand side and leave the right-hand side as just some constant number. So for that reason, um, let me just distribute 0.5 in over this parenthesis. So I'm going to have 3 minus, um, this is 0.5 times 3, so it's 1.5 minus, uh, you know, 0.5 times 0.5. By the way, I, I really don't like, you know, 1.5, 1. yada yada. So instead, I always prefer to use the, the ratio. So 1.5, I'm sorry, 0.5 is just 1 half. So 1 half times 3 is 3 over 2 minus one half times one half, one over four, Q1, all right? That sounds better to me. So Q1 equals this term. So I'm gonna pull the, oh, by the way, that's a very good catch. Uh, three minus three over two minus times minus plus, all right? So be careful. Um, those mistakes are unfortunate, but it happens. So, um, this is gonna be Q1 minus one over four. Q1 equals three minus three over two. It's just three over two, all right? And so here I have three over four. Q1 equals three over two. So those threes will cancel out. The two will cancel out. So I have one, one, 
and, and I have two here. So I have basically Q1. So I have one over two, Q1 equals one. Do the cross product. So Q1 has to be equal to two. Well, what about Q2? Well, remember, you can just plug Q1 here, all right? And then therefore calculate Q2. So if Q1 is two, this is gonna be one, three minus one is two. Well, obviously the actions, the quantities of firm one and firm two must be the same um, because again, the problem is symmetric. They have this symmetric cost function and therefore symmetric reply, best reply functions and uh, you know, the same output. Once again, the only reason for this is that the cost functions are symmetric. If the marginal costs or the fixed costs were different, well, we would have different quantities. All right, so therefore, let's, you can put star here, but these are the Cournot quantities. And then obviously, finally, what is the price? Well, simple, the total quantity will be four units. So the market price, let's put star there, would be 100 minus uh, 16 times four. So this is 64, so the price would be $36, all right? So that's exactly the idea of solving the Cournot model. Step one, calculate the best reply functions. Step two, solve the best reply functions simultaneously. So in the next video, I'm gonna explain why we solve the best reply functions simultaneously, all right?